got 40% off. Good God. Drunken burglar and raid on a house. Oh, hello. Didn't see you come in there. Thanks for dropping by. So, I hear you're going out on your bike this summer. Oh, great. I'm going out on my bike this summer as well. However, there's a few things that might make your life a little misery. Can you guess what they are? No, I'm not Rolf Harris. However, there are a few little insects that might make your life miserable. So, what we're going to do is find out exactly what they are. Let's find out now. So yes, it is summer in the UK, although some of you might not think so due to the fact of how much rain we've been getting here. Um, <clears throat> with that in mind, we do get a lot of midges here in the UK, uh, also ticks as well, which can be a problem. So what I would like to do is I'd like to talk to you about a few things that could help you prevent being bitten by either midges or ticks as well. So let's have a look at ticks, shall we? What are ticks exactly? Ticks are a part of the arachnid family. So that means they've basically got eight legs and they're a bit weird looking. Ticks are blind as well, so they can't see you. The only way that they can sense that you are there is through vibrations through the air. What they like to do is they like to wait on like leafy patches or they like to kind of sit on animals, like for example sheep. Um, they like to basically be able to kind of just sit there and nest or whatever they want to do, chill out. So where do sheep where do where do sheep hang out? Probably in the same place the ticks do, I would imagine. Ticks tend to be ticks, 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 ticks. So for example, dogs or dogs or dogs or dogs or dogs or dogs. So what can we do to protect ourselves against ticks? Well, there's a few things on the market out there, and there's also a lot of information that goes around and stuff. But the main thing is is to look for, for example, ingredients. Now, ingredients can be the most important part of this as well. So let's have a look at ingredients. So what do you really want to be looking for when you're look, looking to protect yourself against ticks? Well, the best thing that I've found and the best thing that I've used is anything that contains permethrin. Now, permethrin is um, a, basically it is a natural ingredient that comes from chrysanthemum flowers. This will kill ticks and it will kill mosquitoes as well. Now, there are other alternatives as well. So for example, if you are allergic to anything, the best thing to do is to try and find out. Now, I don't mean to go and basically try every bit on and see if you die. I mean, go to your doctors. Now, when you go to your doctors, you can actually get an allergy test. And this will basically say that if you're allergic to things like DEET or permethrin or anything like that, you'll find out so that you know to avoid products that contains those ingredients. So permethrin, what is it and where can you find it? Now permethrin can be found in any um, drug stores or any sort of like, uh, for example in the UK we have Boots as well, Boots the Chemist, so chemist shop, things like that. If you go to the counter and you ask for something that specifically contains permethrin, then you're good to go. Um, now there is a company called, uh, I don't know if you can see that, Life Systems is a company that does um, lots of anti-bug sprays and things like that. Um, this one is uh, an Expedition Plus, so this one doesn't contain permethrin. That contains DEET, which is something else, which I'll explain in a moment. So, once applied to the skin, permethrin will actually kill mosquitoes and also ticks. It is a plant extract from chrysanthemum flowers, um, and it's completely natural as well. Obviously, when it gets into a product as well, there'll be all sorts of different chemicals which they place within that to either strengthen it or to kind of... Um, do something else of it. So permethrin is actually good for killing off the bugs as opposed to actually just deterring them. So permethrin is a natural product. It comes from chrysanthemum flowers. So basically they extract that and they produce something with permethrin to actually put into this product. So certain sprays and oils will all contain like permethrin if it's on the ingredients list. So for example, um, 
something like from Life Systems where they have a spray like this for spraying all over yourself. It's completely different to DEET. Now, DEET I will get onto in just a moment, but permethrin you can actually spray on your clothes and you can actually spray it on things like bike frames and things like that and you think why would you want to spray permethrin on a bike frame now the permethrin is actually a very very potent um so the permethrin is actually very very potent that much so don't go anywhere near cats because they absolutely hate it and i believe it can actually hurt cats i don't know if that's true or not but i've read somewhere that it um it cats just don't like it at all they, they can sense it and it's like ugh. it's like the anti um catnip so don't go anywhere near cats with this weirdly enough spraying things onto a bike frame um is fine the only thing I would say is try not to spray it anywhere where it could get clogged up or for example like on the brakes, disc brakes, things like that could damage the brakes or stop them from working. I don't know, I've not really sprayed on there. I know that you can spray it onto certain bike frames. Again, always check with manufacturers if this thing will actually damage it. But for the most part, permethrin is good to go for things like that. The reasons why you'd want to spray things near your legs on the bike frame is because sometimes ticks can get onto the bike frames and they can actually get onto your body as well through that way. So let's have a look at a little thing called chronomus plumosus. Now a few of you are wondering what the hell is chronomus plumosus, better known as the midgey. Midgeys are an absolute pain in the arse. Now, Midges, what are they? Let's have a quick look at things like this. They are flying insects. Um, they basically only live, well, the adults actually only live three to five days. Now, their sole purpose, and I mean their only purpose in life, is to mate before they die. So the females will actually lay the eggs on the top of water and the eggs will actually sink down below the surface level. They will actually stay dormant there for God knows how long it'll stay there all winter if it needs to be. So when summer comes around and you see these huge clouds of midges everywhere, that's the three to five days. So which one actually does the biting then? Well, it's actually the females that will tend to bite you the most. The males don't bite. So the males are there just purely just to reproduce. Uh, so what the females will actually do is they will actually land on you and they will start to suck on your blood. They have a jaw which basically can cut through the skin so they can start to take the blood into their system. So they'll actually produce, so they'll take out more than double their body weight in, of blood into their system. What that reason there for is to basically help with her egg laying, NN diphylmetolumide. So what is that exactly? Now, this was produced for the American army during like, the 1940s, 1946, and it was produced to basically help soldiers prevent things like ticks and mosquito bites. So this was actually produced by the American Army during 1946. So due to the Pacific campaigns raging on towards the end of the Second World War and the Americans fighting in places like Guam and Japan and other places like that, the Americans needed something that would help them against tropical diseases and things like mosquitoes which carried disease also. So what was produced was actually DEET. Now DEET is actually a very strong chemical which actually does not kill um, anything. So what DEET does is it actually doesn't kill anything at all. What it'll do is it'll just tell the bugs that there's something off there, the mosquitoes, ticks, uh, anything like that, it'll go I don't like that and it'll just stay clear. So DEET. So why choose DEET? So what's the difference between DEET and permethrin? Well, some products actually contain both. There is a base layer of permethrin mixed in with DEET to give a bigger combination of bug repellent. Now, permethrin is actually something that is, because of it being natural, it is kinder towards the skin and it is less chemical based. Whereas DEET is actually a lot stronger and it's a higher concentration of chemicals. Bear in mind that DEET was first brought up within the 1940s. Since then, things like permethrin and other items on the market are actually a lot more safer to the skin. So DEET actually gets absorbed into the skin as well. 
Um, and the only way that I can be excreted through that is via the kidneys, which is still under investigation, so I've read. Uh, don't quote me on this one. But if anything is being excreted via your skin and your kidneys, I don't think I'd really want to be spraying it on me. Another downside towards DEET also is the fact that it can damage your clothing. Now, things that have like fleece um, or any sort of synthetics, they can become damaged over time. Not necessarily straight away, it won't necessarily disintegrate like a lighter to a, a plastic bag, but it can damage them over time. So is it really worth that high-end product that you've possibly bought, for example, like uh, Gore-Tex, it can damage the materials which hold together Gore-Tex as well. So is it really worth getting DEET? I don't know. The only thing I would say about DEET is that it is really good at repelling bugs if you apply it to your skin. You should never apply that to your clothing items. Now, permethrin on the other hand is much better and it can be found on items such as bug repellent clothing, also tents that have bug repellents. You also can find things like bug nets as well which you can wear around your head and it can also have bug nets for your bed as well which also contain permethrin within that as well. So what is my opinion on DEET versus permethrin? Well, I would say that my personal choice would be for to use permethrin. However, there are other options on the market, some natural and some chemical. So why don't we have a little look at something else, some of the other products that are available on the market, and let's have a look at what we can use to protect ourselves from midges and ticks. So let's actually have a look at some of the items that we have here. So for example, this is a, a pin plug, so you can use this. So for example, if you're staying somewhere, if you're mountain biking somewhere hot, um, or any, for example like in Scotland and you need mosquito repellent and you're not willing to just put it on overnight you can actually plug in one of these. I also have another one so repel so these are basically so these are great for example if you stayed at a hotel or something like that this is a jungle formula um, this actually has So this is a roll-on, just much like your roll-on deodorant, except you just roll it onto your skin and you're good to go. Life Systems, this is a great one. I've been using this quite a bit. I've used this in tropical climates as well. This is really, really good. I really, really like uh, Life Systems. Um, so this is actually a spray. So you just spray that and then you can just rub it into your skin. This is just a standard, but this is just a bog standard repel from Boots the Boots the Boots the. So this, so this is just a bog standard repel from Boots the Chemist. So you'll find that on the back, there is usually sort of instructions, things like that, highly flammable, and you'll usually have things like DEET. It'll contain things like that. So. Um, another thing as well, um, when you buy in the plugs and things like that, you'll need a, a refill as well, like a container like this. You'll have seen them. Life Systems also do another one as well. I have to say I'm not sponsored by Life Systems. Now, this is an interesting one here. So this is Expel Mosquito uh, and Insect Repellent. Two um, mosquito bands. So I just want to talk a little bit more about this little band here. Now what you do is you take these bands out. Um, 12 seconds later. And, and this is it. It's just a little like sort of yellow band and it smells like citronella. Essentially citronella doesn't last very long. These bands don't do anything because basically you're, what you're essentially doing is you're putting the repellent to a certain part. Now, if I'm wearing shorts, like if I'm out biking and uh, if I'm out on my bike and I'm also kind of like looking at doing some tracks that's got quite a bit of long grass, things like that, this isn't gonna help like around my wrist when I need to be covering my legs, my neck, other things like that. So the best thing to do would be, in my opinion, I would use permethrin. But that's just my opinion, and I would spray that 
everywhere. You want the biggest amount of coverage that you can get that's going to protect you from ticks, um, anything that's going to bite you, uh, things like that, because otherwise you're going to have a bad time. <clears throat> so thanks very much for watching, guys. Um, I really hope that you enjoyed this. Um, this video was purely intended to just basically um, give people like a base knowledge of ticks and uh, midges and things like that um, just to give people a heads up because obviously a lot of people are going to be picking up mountain biking this summer and they want to be going out um, I've spent many many years running around in fields and things like this and I've never once thought about ticks um, or well anything else other than that really and uh, Lyme's disease is uh, it can be a serious condition guys um, so I want to make that perfectly clear that really you should really kind of look into what Lyme's disease is um, so what I've done is I've included um, a list of items which I think I feel are necessary um, to take with you at all times these are things that can just slip, simply go into your wallet um, or you can use before a ride etc so I'll list uh, a few things below um, if you've had any bad experiences or if you have Lyme's disease or anything of you if you want to put any input into this video or anything then just leave a comment down below um, and we can get chat about this um, it's important to to stay safe really so but thanks again for watching guys I, I really do appreciate you coming back um, I know we're over 100 subscribers now which is absolutely fantastic so um, I just want to give a, a massive uh, I just want to give a nice shout out to Johannes Nielsen um, I believe you just subscribed so thanks very much welcome to the channel I hope you, that you enjoy I hope you enjoy all the content that I'm producing um, yeah so again um, just make sure that you check all of the facts and make your own informed decision. Don't take my word as gospel uh, because I'm not the most knowledgeable on these sort of things. I just want to give my sort of experience, uh, uh, my limited experience uh, of what I know about this subject because I feel it's important, especially because we're all a bunch of mountain bikers that want to get involved um, and get out and hit the trails. So be careful guys, that's all I'm saying. So thanks again for watching and don't forget, I'm the Northern Rider. Thanks for dropping in and I'll see you in the next one.